Hedonism is the idea that pleasure is the ultimate goal of life. It's the philosophy that proposes we spend each waking moment in pursuit of what makes us feel good. The United States, for example, tends to be a nation that abides by this philosophy. We are the land of the free and each is entitled to his own. We support every lifestyle because we want our own to be supported. If we want to eat McDonald's all day, hedonism says that we should. If we want to hook up with that person at the bar, hedonism says, go ahead. It isn't that hedonists ignore the consequences of actions, but they realize that they cannot know when their life will be taken away, and they might as well make the most of it while they have it. Let's head over to the opposite end of the spectrum, asceticism. Asceticism is the denial of all bodily pleasures. Ascetics often believe that pleasures are sinful or harmful to the body. Most modern day religions tend to be semi-ascetic, and a similar standpoint is held by nutritionists these days. Pleasures are often seen by ascetics as twisted in a way that harms us in the long run. One example of this is that humans have an urge to eat sweet things due to evolutionary necessity. Our ancestors ate sweet things to survive, so sweet things taste good to us. These days, this is taken advantage of by the addition of sugar to everything. Ascetic nutritionists might say, don't ever eat sugar. Traditional philosophy will tell you that neither end of the spectrum is usually the correct viewpoint. As Buddhists might say, you need both ends of the spectrum for personal and interpersonal harmony. The ascetics have the point that you can't throw everything into your body and expect a healthy life, and the hedonists have the point that without any pleasures, there's really no life at all. So how do we reconcile these contrasting beliefs? Well, the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus has a solution. Asceticism has a very zoomed out view of life and takes the approach that every detail along the way must be in support of certain ideals. In contrast, hedonism approaches life as chronological moments in time. It says that in each moment, the hedonist must put everything towards pleasure. Epicurus takes a utilitarian approach, using the zoomed out view of the ascetics and saying that instead of living each moment without pleasures, we must live only pleasures that do not cause a greater displeasure in the long run. He says, so when we say that pleasure is the end, we do not mean the pleasures of the dissipated and those that consist in having a good time, as some out of ignorance and disagreement or refusal to understand suppose we do, but freedom from pain in the body and from disturbance in the soul. For what produces pleasant life is not continuous drinking and parties or pederasty or womanizing or enjoyment of fish and the other dishes of an expensive table, but sober reasoning, which tracks down the causes of every choice and avoidance, and which banishes the opinions that beset souls with the greatest confusion. Now, this may sound ascetic, but like I said, the difference is in his approach. Whereas the ascetics view the pleasures as wrong, Epicurus views the pleasures as the goal. Hedonists view the pleasures as bodily, but Epicurus views the pleasures as the peace of the body and the peace of the mind. So what does this mean? How do we actually live a life like Epicurus? Well, Epicurus is all about living in moderation and pursuing the benefit of his mind. He saw the mind as the ultimate authority in his life. It was there with him through the thick and thin and if he took care of it, pushing it and sharpening it, it would be his greatest ally. So according to Epicurus, moderation and mental stimulation are the keys to a happy life. On his deathbed, Epicurus reportedly wrote the following letter. I've written this letter to you on a happy day to me, which is also the last day of my life. For I've been attacked by a pain so violent that nothing can be added to the violence of my sufferings. But the cheerfulness of my mind which comes from the recollection of all my philosophical contemplation, counterbalances all these afflictions. Wrapping it all up, I, th I think what we've learned today is that it's not about avoiding the pleasures, and it's not oppositely about indulging in them completely. I think the real point is just moderation. Epicurus enjoyed life thoroughly. He didn't embrace these worldly pleasures, but he didn't ignore them either. He moderated them. He moderated the pleasures and became a lifelong learner. He spent his life sharpening his mind, working on philosophical thoughts. And in the end, he was happy, even though he was in much pain. So I think, I think that's the way to go. <laughs>
that's that's all I have. Uh, guess I'll see y'all in a in another video. Um, leave your comments down below if you have any recommendations. Uh, yeah. Happy days.